start off by deleting everything from the scene. Press A to select everything, followed by X, and click Delete. Then, from the front view, add in a reference image of your bottle. Adjust the opacity and drag it up so that the base of the bottle is at the origin. Now, add in a cylinder for the body of the perfume bottle. Tab into Edit Mode and adjust its position and scale so that it matches with the reference image. Then, Alt select the top edge and press E, followed by S to extrude and scale the neck of the bottle, then drag it up a little and extrude the rest of the way. Now press Tab to exit Edit Mode. Go into the Modifiers menu and add in a Solidify modifier. By enabling the X-ray view, the thickness of the glass can be seen and adjusted. Once happy, make sure to apply the modifier. This is often overlooked. Tab back into Edit Mode. Alt select the top edge and press Ctrl and B to bevel the edge. Use the scroll wheel to adjust the number of segments. For these fairly sharp corners, we do not need very many segments. Repeat this on all visible edges. In Face Select mode, select any face on the bottle, then press L to select all faces that are connected to the selected face. And finally press H to hide the outer layer of glass. You should be left with the inner layer now. If everything disappears, make sure that you applied the Solidify modifier correctly. Again, select each edge and press Ctrl B to bevel them. However, to give the bottom of the glass more thickness, bevel that edge much more, then press G and Z to drag it up, and then S and Z to flatten out the curvature. To give the top of the bottle thicker glass as well, in transparent mode, select all the top vertices and press G then Z and bring them down. Now select one of the faces, press L to select all connected faces, and go to the material window. Click the plus to add in a new material and name it inside. Then make sure to click assign. I forgot here and had to go back to correct the error. Now that the inner material has been assigned to the inner part of the bottle, hold down Alt and press H to unhide the outer layer. Again, select one of the outer faces, press L to select the entire outer shell, then add in a new material named outside and assign it to the outer layer. This step will allow us to create separate materials for the inner and outer part of the glass. Tab out of edit mode, right click and select shade smooth. Now add in a new cylinder to create the perfume bottle's lid. Tab into edit mode and press G then Z to position the lid above the bottle, then press S to scale down the model to the appropriate size. Once it matches the overall shape of the reference image, we can add in the grid-like texture. Add in a loop cut in the middle of the lid, then press Ctrl and B to bevel that line. Use the scroll wheel to increase the number of lines. Then, under the face drop-down menu, select Poke Faces. Select a few of the diagonal lines. Hold down Shift and press G. This will allow you to select all edges of equal length. If everything becomes selected, Adjust the threshold so that only the diagonal lines are selected. Then press Ctrl and I to invert the selection. To delete the unwanted grid, hold Ctrl and press X. Then, select the diagonals once more using Shift G to select similar lines, and press I twice to inset the selection. Once the diamond pattern has been achieved, press S to give the texture some thickness. Then tab out of Edit Mode, go to the Modifier menu and add in a bevel modifier to round out all the sharp edges. Increase the segments. Once happy, apply the modifier, then right-click and select Shade Smooth. I went back to edit mode for a moment just to elongate the lids slightly. Add in yet another cylinder for the metal bands at the top and bottom of the perfume bottle's lid. Tab into edit mode and adjust the cylinder as needed. Then select the edges of the ring by holding Alt and Shift while selecting. Hold Ctrl and press B to round them out. Once it matches one of the rings, press A to select everything, then hold Shift and press D to duplicate it for the other ring. Lastly, tab out of Edit Mode, right-click and select Shade Smooth. The bottle is now complete, so we no longer need the reference image. Add in a plane for the background. Tab into Edit Mode and scale it up. Select the back edge and press E to extrude it upwards. Select the newly formed back corner and bevel it to make a smooth backdrop. Tab out of edit mode. Right click and select shade smooth. For the lighting, add in an area light. 
scale it up and position it so that it points towards the perfume bottle at an angle. In the light menu, increase its power significantly. Now in the rendered view, we can see how the lighting looks. I added three lights total. The first comes in from the left, the next is placed diagonally in from the right, and the last one shines down from the back. I did this by holding shift and pressing D to duplicate the first light. This way I didn't have to worry about adjusting the settings for each light individually. Once the lighting looks pretty good, go to the front view and add in a camera. Position it as desired. I like to increase the focal length in the camera menu to give the end result a slightly more professional look. By pressing Ctrl B, we can drag a box around the camera's view. Now only what is visible from the camera's view will be rendered. This reduces the amount of work for the computer. For the materials, select the glass bottle. With the outside material selected, change the principal BSDF to a glass BSDF. Reduce the roughness. Then select the inside material. Also switch to a glass BSDF and reduce the roughness. But this time, also change the IOR to a value of 1.33. This will make it appear as liquid. Change the color as desired. In this case, I went with a Tiffany blue. Under the render menu, switch from EVE to Cycles. I decided that I wanted the glass of the perfume bottle to also be tinted, so I went back and changed the color of the outside material as well. However, I reduced the saturation to lighten up the look. Once happy with the colors, I went out of edit mode so as not to overwork my computer. Select the lid, add in a new material, and adjust the color as desired. Again, I went with the Tiffany blue, but reduced the saturation. For the metal rings, add in a new material, increase the metallic slider to 1, and reduce the roughness. The Tiffany perfume bottle is now looking quite good. It is just missing one key aspect. The logo. Go into the shading window. Select the perfume bottle. In the lower window, we are going to be editing the outside material. To do this, add in a mix shader node. This will be used to mix the metallic material of the logo with the glass material of the bottle. Connect the glass BSDF to one of the shader nodes, and connect a principal BSDF to the other shader node. This will look weird. Adjust the metallic slider and roughness slider on the principal BSDF. Right now, the glass and metallic materials are evenly mixed. To separate them so that the metal is only visible where the logo is, add in an image texture node to the third node on the mix shader. Add in an image of the Tiffany logo. This will not look correct at first. Go to the UV editing window. Select all the faces of the bottle and scale them way down on the left hand side of the screen. Position them so that they do not overlap with any part of the logo. Back on the right-hand side, select only the faces that you want the Tiffany logo to appear. Then scale those faces up so that they align with the logo as desired. Adjust the scale and don't worry if it seems to be repeating itself. Back in the shading window, switch the image texture from repeating to clip. The logo should no longer be repeated. I went back to the UV editing window quickly to adjust the placement of the logo one last time. To give the logo a three-dimensional feel, Add a bump node connected to the normal of the principal BSDF. Then connect the height node to the image texture node. If the logo appears to be concave, check the invert box. And adjust the distance slider as desired. Now, to give the backdrop that sleek reflective look, simply add in a new material and reduce the roughness. The scene is now complete. There are just a few tweaks to the render settings needed and then we can render out our final image of the Tiffany perfume bottle. Reduce the max number of samples so that it doesn't take forever to render the image. Now go up to the render drop-down and click render image.